Hi, this is Johnny Bergen with another Chicago Blues guitar lesson. This time we're talking about Lonnie Johnson sitting here in Arendal, Norway. I'm sure I got the pronunciation wrong. And a very gray, sad day outside and makes me like to listen to Lonnie Johnson. There's kind of a, a pleasant sadness to a lot of his music, although he could really jump and really swing too. Um, there's this kind of exquisite melancholy to it and boy he had a terrible life in a lot of ways like he went on tour in England came back and his whole family had died from the Spanish flu and uh, but there's a lot of happiness in his music too and, and I just love it I wish more people played this kind of thing he's kind of one of the original electric guitar players original lead guitar players playing with the vibrato and the single notes and with a pick you know, he really kind of created a modern style of guitar playing. Big influence on BB, big influence on, you know, people like Bob Dylan. I mean, it just goes on and on. And he didn't even get a headstone until the Killer Headstone Project got a headstone for him in 2014. What a beautiful singer and guitar player. So the song I'd like to start out with is called Have to Change Keys to Play These Blues. This song is in D. And then it goes to G, goes back to D, and it ends in G. And you know, why not? There's no ironclad law that says you have to end where you start, right? So uh, the way I'm figuring the best is that Lonnie Johnson is in D without the capo. And Eddie Lang is with the capo. And um, it would be well worth it to do what I did and, and try to uh, loop the Eddie Lang part. There's a lot of really nice... Uh, bass lines in there like that out of a C chord I've got the capo on the second fret here and then then he'll go to a seventh right before you go to the four chord and then maybe add the ninth at the last minute they like to walk up their chords both of them um, Lonnie Johnson's always walking up his chords for the endings you know of his, especially of his ballads And then back. That's just an F shape chord, I mean, a, like a bar chord, G bar chord. Back to the C with the G in the bass. I'm calling it a C, it's a D, but you know, I'm just thinking like, okay, you got the capo here, it's like a C chord, right? with the uh, fifth and the bass. And then you've got that uh, second fret on the up from the capo on the D string. Walk it down. Guess what? You're right there in your G chord. That's like a G seventh, G first inversion. They don't do this, right? That would just kill it, wouldn't it? All right. And then they're on to the G chord. He really makes that walk, doesn't he? When he plays the seventh. So that's, the, that's basically how the chords go. So I hope that's not confusing. I'm calling this a C because I just think about it that way if I've got my capo. Lonnie Johnson is here. Because when you hear Lonnie Johnson's chords, it's more... It doesn't sound like this. It sounds... Then he goes minor. That's another way of making it sweet, right? You know? You can play it with a capo and do it that way. It's the world won't end, you know? You can play his lead lines, you know, this way. Or you can just work a little harder and do this. I kind of like this because you have a more percussive thing. There's like a percussive snap there. But you have to jump, you know? So the whole Lonnie Johnson deal 
is it's kind of out of this chord or this chord with your root here and then you're linking positions together so you have this you have this and you have this and then occasionally he really cries and goes This is how pretty that sounds over the five chord. And then he's playing in this kind of G chord up here, right? Um, So he could start at the top and go down, or he could start at the bottom and go to the top, you know. Hope I'm not leaving you behind here. There's a lot to talk about. So let's talk about the way the song starts. Eddie Lane goes with his capo playing like a, a pretty C chord with the capo there. And he starts in this position, a D7 shape. Then I just move down. So that was pretty, right? Let's try it again. I love that minor note there. And now if you want to do it with the capo, then You can just move your hand there. See, that's out of a C7 or D7 shape. The other thing I don't like about using the capo here is this, this note just sits there. You can't really vibrato it at all. Sometimes you might want to put a little vibrato there. But, you know, maybe you don't have to vibrato it that much. So it's a choice. I'm going to play the lick one more time. No, don't, don't be vibratoing here yet. You just want to make it sweet, kind of poignant, you know. You can move up just fourth fret up to the fifth fret up. You could end on the seventh chord if you want to. Um, the seventh is always like a little signal saying you're going to the four chord. This sounds beautiful over the four chord. And put a nice little sting on there. I like the way they end their phrases like this. Do do do. Or twice. Or and then he does something great the next go around. He does this. Whoops. He's playing against the rhythm. The rhythm's like. And over that, he's going. This is just behind your D chord here. 10th fret, 8th fret. Just like Sweet Home Chicago, right? That same shape. 10th fret, 8th fret. When you move it down, 3 frets, you got the top part of this D chord, right? And then he moves it back and forth like this. Like Robert Nighthawk does that too. It's real pretty. And then he does something real nice. He goes. And then he goes. Something like that. It's just out of your, your four seventh chord. You could even use the open 
B string if you have no capo. Which I kind of like the percussiveness of that, especially if you're using a 12 string. The notes have a punch to it, you know? Make it wait. And then he goes. Something really great. Let's see if I can get it right. And then that saves traveling through the whole position. And then he goes. I know I've got that a little bit wrong, but this is really not that hard. So the first go around, he plays it pretty calm, but by the second go around, he does this sort of dazzling stuff when he gets to the five to sort of show, oh, I got a lot more tricks up my sleeve. But he didn't hit you over the head with it right away. Just like, remember when we talked about the Ike Turner lesson? And he, he waited before he hit you with the whammy bar. That was his trick. And but so Lonnie Johnson is waiting before he does this stuff where he's on the one, and then he goes to the five to do this. Let's see if I can do it again. That was totally wrong, but... Uh, And so it's just a way to sort of travel into the the uh, five chord. And he does that in all these solos, like blues ain't nothing, trouble ain't nothing but the blues. So he's just waiting, he's sort of like drawing you in and then clobbering you. And that, that sounds like he wrapped it all up. And, and then he goes to G. You can play it here on the 15th and 12th. Or, then he does the same thing again in, in, when it gets around to the 5 in the G part. It's something like that. It's real slick, the way he plays it. And sometimes he'll play a bit against the rhythm, too, like towards the end of the song. Over. So I hope I'm not going too fast here. Um, the best thing to do is just kind of lay out the ingredients. See if you can do that. It's four, I mean, two and four. And then three and five on the B string, two and four on the G string, three and five. And then you got your third finger just raring to go here, fifth to seventh, or sixth to seventh. That's tricky, and that, I admit, is a lot easier with the capo if you were going to do it that way. You could go. He does that all the time. That would be the fourth fret up on the B string. Open. That's hard to do. So, you know, it's up to you. Man. You can finger it that way too. Or you can finger it that way. So let's hit it again. Make it cry. Anyway, I hope this is helpful for you. Um, I would definitely try to find a friend and play it with it um, and get a capo and, and uh, play those pretty bass notes. Um, I'll do just a little bit of a, of a 
more typical song, I guess. It has a great solo in G, and it's like... You can almost slap the notes a little bit, like Sun Seal. Yeah. Yeah! <laughs> Let's try the... Yeah. So, you can really let loose with it. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty. I mean, it doesn't have to be, like, sad and everything. You can really rock the house with it, too. But, um, anyway, I know Lonnie Johnson died a long time ago. I don't know if any of you have any Lonnie Johnson stories. Maybe people who lived in Canada and saw him in the 70s, in the 60s or something like that. But, uh, love to hear whatever you have to say, comment about, about Lonnie Johnson. I mean, this could go on forever. Like, his intro to Jelly Roll Baker, you know, or, wait. <laughs> I guess I just play a C chord like that, C shape chord. I love that. I wonder if that's where Little Smokey got it. Oh, you can really have some fun. I'll do that slow. Yeah. So it just goes on and on, like you know the kind of the, the swing and the beauty of his of his playing. So hope you guys enjoy it. Do a Stay in touch and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.